Okay, so guys, we're continuing on with our live stream, which is probably a new video for you if you're watching on YouTube or BitChute or Rumble or whatever, because our sort of last question will be the first one and only one today. Uh, it was sort of about whether whether or not uh, Russia has thrown off the yoke of, um, or by what means has Russia sort of freed itself from some sort of social programming and evil plots, this, that, and the other. And uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to copy uh, and follow in the footsteps of our dear friend, Joaquin Flores, who broke down the words of a particular Russian philosopher who explained something about liberalism recently that um, I think we really need to analyze here because I think it really answers the question about uh, uh, like wokeness, social programming, uh, uh, great reset culture, and what's happening in Russia. And I think that he, the the, the great philosopher, uh, did a brilliant job of breaking this down. However. Uh, we're unfortunately going to have to read it in English together. So let's see how the translation is. But I think he provided a great answer. And sorry, Joaquin, I'm blatantly copying off you. But I didn't watch all of your live stream because that way all my ideas could at least in theory be original. So sorry, Joaquin, I'm copying you. Uh, our society, uh, Russia, et cetera, uh, has, because remember, from the standpoint of uh, a certain philosopher, uh, Russia is not just the borders of one particular nation, Westphalian nation state, but Russia is this greater civilizational concept. So our society, Russia, etc., has developed a particular scale of liberalism constructed according to the degree of social dangerousness, a real toxicity. So the unconscious liberal who does not know he is liberal does not qualify as such. The latent liberal, prone to liberalism, who suspects he is a liberal, but carefully conceals it. The former liberal, who has changed his views along with the conjuncture and whose relapse is possible. The open liberal, who courageously and stubbornly continues to defend liberalism and the West and is preparing to emigrate, <laughs> as in leave, or has already left. The liberal protester against the special military operation in Putin in a state somewhere between immediate emigration and mental illness. The liberal foreigner who is an open liberal protester recognized as dangerous by the system and at the same time a liberal rebel of whom we can recognize a first wave fleeing the SMO and the patriotic turn. A second wave of fleeing mobilization, a third wave fleeing Prigozhin's mace, uh, I think they meant more his rebellion, uh, the liberal terrorist, mentally ill with suicidal tendencies, a nationalist ready to commit murder, arson, bombings, and so forth. All liberals are dangerous, he says, but to varying degrees. They're not represented ideologically in politics. That's the important thing. They are not represented ideologically in politics. So you don't see uh, too much of anything particularly liberal when it comes to the state Duma. On the contrary, the elite, apart from the security forces, is mostly dominated by uh, former liberals. So there's the opposite. So a lot of the people who today are in power, although they never mention it and their political parties are not based in it, they were all the liberals of the 90s, including... Zhirinovsky, the late great Zhirinovsky, rose on the wave of liberalism in the 90s. So they are, again, the elite, apart from the security forces, is mostly dominated by former liberals, latent and unaware. High concentrations in capital cities, in the entertainment industry, in education, the result of years of large-scale epistemological subversion, the work of Western intelligence agencies, networks like Soros, which concedes politics among a certain segment of youth, an overwhelming number of internet bots are programmed as liberal. So what is he sort of saying here? He's essentially saying that liberalism in Russia is, there is still the sort of threat from liberalism in Russia, but essentially that overall most people are latently liberal or unaware that they're liberal. So what does that translate into you and me? It translates to what Tim has been telling you for the last two freaking years since I started this project, or maybe it was more than two years ago. Maybe it was three. I don't even remember. But for the last few years, I've been talking about this project. I've been telling you that Russia has no alternative ideas. And so what happens when Russia essentially rejects Western liberalism? So we say, no, 
no to wokeness, no to liberalism, no to having a genderless existence. No, no, no. We want to have families and all that. We are pro-family. Da, da, da. Well, what happens when you say that, but you offer nothing in return? You essentially have this sort of culture of no where people are essentially lately liberal. So ultimately, although Russians tend to feel very proud that they've, they're super proud, we've gone on the path to conservative values. We're the bastion of traditionalism. What does traditional look like? Uh, how does our society reflect uh, tradi uh, conservative values? Does our legal system reflect conservative values? And the crickets start chirping because we essentially tried to shove an ideology out of our minds in Russia but not replace it with something new. And in the empty vacuum of what used to be, it's kind of like, you know, I just today uh, had some stuff in the refrigerator that I kind of had leave it, like, left there for a while. Some neighbors gave me some uh, stuff like in jars that I don't even like, like these, like some really, really overly salted mushrooms. I was like, well, maybe I'll eat them later. And I never did. So essentially I've gotten rid of all these nasty mushrooms that weren't very good, but that, rotting smell is kind of still in the refrigerator. And that's what's happening with Russia. It's like we've rejected liberalism. Okay, but have we put something new and fresh and good into our uh, intellectual refrigerator? No. So the stench, the latent liberalism, as the great philosopher puts it, is still there. Ah, Ah, so let's go back in this context. Let's go back. Let's see. I hope I'm recording this. I'm actually doing a pretty good job. Hello. Is the recording actually working? It is. Fantastic. What a lovely day. So let's go back and take a look at this. So who, who are we talking about? The unconscious liberal. Again, how could you be unconsciously liberal when you have no other ideology in your head? So you're doing things. Like a lot of people in Russia, you ask someone, uh, are they like liberal? They're like, no, man, uh, letter Z, we'll go. Russia's going forward, man. But ultimately, probably divorced, had like one or two kids at best. Uh, what do they want to do with their lives? Get drunk, play video games. The unconscious liberal. Liberal stuff going on, values liberal, not even knowing it. The latent liberal is someone who could maybe very well return to liberalism. Uh, I don't know. Some would say that used to be Medvedev. Uh, the former liberal. But again, uh, so the former liberal who has changed his views along with the conjuncture uh, and whose relapse is possible. Again, why is the relapse possible? Because Russia doesn't offer a different ideology. It just vacated, vacated the bad. Because again, this is something we've heard from American politics uh, man, for many years. Why the Republicans always lose? Because they become the party of no. They just say that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. And they don't offer a different vision. Trump started to offer a different vision from America. And well, we all know how that went. So yeah, but I'll tell you what. Him offering a different vision was a lot more, as in offering an ideology, a way of looking at something, an idea to buy into, to put in your uh, uh, moldy refrigerator. Uh, that was a uh, much better proposition than any of the Republicans have had since uh, my entire lifetime. Uh, so there you go. Uh, we have the open liberal, and then he's sort of getting to these uh, the other liberals who are still sort of here, the ones, that, the very, very last ones that are here, and apparently with the uh, Prigozhin's uh, uprising, uh, maybe all of those sort of uh, fled because the amount of sort of open liberals has really uh, decreased. Uh, he also mentions the liberal terrorist because, uh, well, who else are the people who have been uh, working with the uh, Kiev special for services there to uh, do all sorts of horrible things like burn the Quran and uh, uh, do have that sort of weird uprising in the border towns and all this other stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, uh, as uh, the philosopher says, all liberals are dangerous, but to varying degrees. And they're not represented ideologically in politics. On the contrary, the elite, apart from the security forces, is mostly dominated by former liberals, latent and unaware. So that was about sort of our question about like the yoke of um, social programming and globalization. Uh, if Alex Jones is with us, uh, is that uh, Russia in some ways, it's almost like Russia has sort of, you know, maybe then unhitched itself from this this yoke, but it's just kind of standing by the cart. It's like, yay, I'm free. Uh, and it's looking around. It's like, wow, there's a big field here, and uh, there's nowhere to go. So I guess I'm just going to stand by the old cart that I used to pull and wait. You know what I mean? 
So that's sort of the real problem here. And I'm glad that someone brought this up because otherwise I probably wouldn't have done this. Anyways, uh, guys, I'm going to head out. Are there any comments about this in the chat? Probably not. Uh, we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, Hollywood focuses on poorly educated people. And I think that's about something else. Yeah, that's about something else entirely. Anyways, guys, we got two live streams done today. This one's going to be real short, but I think I uh, got to the point there. So anyways, guys, uh, Tim Kirby here signing out.